Okay, now let's look at the new rules of codec deployments, and we'll look at the impact of the HEVC royalty imbroglio. Always wanted to use imbroglio in a sentence. Here we go. And then the impact of the Alliance for Open Media. So here is how the HEVC royalty schedule slipped out. So first draft international spec was January 2013. MPEG-LA came out in January 2014 with a 20 cent per unit, $25 million cap, no content royalties pool. So that was one year. And in July 2015, HEVC Advance, now Access Advance, came out with a royalty policy that was up to $1.50 a unit. There wasn't a cap, and there were proposed royalties on content of 0 0.005 of addressable revenue. And later this was dropped, and a cap was added later. But still, we're, we're going from one year to two and a half years. And then in March 2017, the Velas pool launched, and they don't publicize their terms. And to this day, you know, we're, we're way over here, I guess 121, um, doesn't roll out content royalties. So the Alliance for Open Media was formed right around here, and most people considered that a direct response to HEVC Advance coming out with policies that they quickly changed, but were very, very stark and very, very uncommercial when, when initially launched. And Velos came after the Alliance for Open Media, but four and a half years after people started using the codec, they came out with a different pool, which presumably has royalties that are, you know, probably somewhere between this and the new cap for HEBC Advance, which is now 40 million. And this is a famous picture created by Jonathan Samuelson of Davidion uh, in 2017. Now he's with Apple. And basically what it does is show you the three pools here with some, some companies in both and substantial companies outside of any pool. So this made HEVC very expensive to license and also very risky to license because you had three pools to deal with plus a bunch of companies in here who didn't state their intentions regarding royalties. And that caused a delay in technology adoption. So with MPEG-2, H.264, and HEBC, many companies started integrating the technologies before the royalty structure was final. And this is from uh, a LinkedIn conversation from David Ronka, who was at Netflix at the time and is now director of video encoding at Facebook. And he basically said, talking to someone from the MCIF, we'll cover what that is in a moment, that they got burned when they adopted HEBC too early because of the licensing policies. And post HEBC, I think that's much less likely to happen. I think many, if not most, of the large integrators, the TV, phone vendors, OTT, STB, CPU, GPU, and system on a chip vendors, won't decide to integrate a new technology until the royalty structure is known. And that's going to delay potential integrations because the royalty policies, as we saw, can take up to four and a half years after the spec is finalized. And here's Mr. Ronka, again, putting a final note in where he said EVC and or VVC may, may be interesting codecs if they have clear royalty terms. In the meantime, don't be surprised if there are a few companies willing to jump on the deploy our codec now and trust us for fair and clear royalty terms train. We did that in 2014. That didn't go so well. So the new rule is companies won't adopt a technology until the royalty structure is known. That makes that a pretty big date to keep track of. Now let's look at the impact of the Alliance for Open Media and AV1. So the prominent members include, you know, Apple, Microsoft, and Google, big in the desktop mobile OSs, device manufacturers, component vendors, content publishers, and infrastructure vendors. So AV1 controls desktop software. They con control mobile OS hardware and software. They control the browsers. They control many of the components. They dominate content. They dominate other viewing platforms. You've got Samsung, Apple, Amazon, Google, uh, very, very big in the OTT market. And then you've got inf infrastructure providers who can adopt or not adopt a codec and allow it to be distributed. And this is what it looks like. This is a, a website called Can I Use? And this brown data is from that website, and this is from StatCounter. I just wanted a quick look at where browser share stood. Now these, the numbers represented up here, we'll get to in a moment, these are overall browser shares for all versions of Chrome, for all versions of Safari, for all versions of, of uh, Firefox. So there's more detail here. Now, HEVC was finalized in January 2013. It's currently supported in 19% of browsers. It's not supported in Chrome, Firefox, Edge, or Samsung, all Alliance for Open Media members. 
It is supported by Apple, who joined the Alliance for Open Media in, I think, 2018 or 2019. They weren't one of the founding members. Now, if we look at AV1, which was launched five years later, it enjoys 33.62% browser support, almost twice as much as ATBC, primarily because it's supported in Edge, Firefox, and Chrome, though it is not supported by Apple devices. You would expect that to come because Apple recently added VP9 support for 4K YouTube videos. And it's not yet supported in mobile browsers from AOM members, but it is supported in apps from some AOM members who are shipping AV1 video for playback on Android devices and uh, Apple devices via their apps. So the bottom line is AOM members can slow or block the deployment of standard-based codecs in a lot of different markets. And the lack of browser support is a very big deal for most smaller producers with substantial you know, PC playback as opposed to living room playback. If you're Netflix or if you're Hulu or, or other large OTT shops, you've got most people viewing in living room devices, so you don't need to be in the browser as much. Now, software codecs can work around on computers by using a third-party player. So Vnova was able to distribute their Perseus technology, which is now LCEVC, using the Theo player. Um, but this may trigger a royalty obligation. And if you're a hardware codec, you're going to have to wait until the device supports you uh, due to battery life concerns or performance issues. And if hardware development is slowed because one of these companies decides not to support a standard-based codec, then it's going to be slower to get on these platforms as well. So Alliance for Open Media is a huge deal because they're controlling big blocks of content and big blocks of playback as well as big blocks of infrastructure and components.